Introduction This course was written for the mind, but only to move the mind to appeal to the heart, to move it to listen, to move it to accept confusion, to move it to cease its resistance to mystery, its quest for answers, and to shift its focus to the truth and away from what can be learned only by the mind. What is learned by the mind only rearranges reality. The mind then holds to the new reality as a new set of rules without change. It sees reality through these new mental constructs and calls this way of seeing new. In order to support its new reality, it must insist that others follow these new rules. Truth, it says, has been found, and it is here, in these new rules and not in the old. The mind will then tell you how to feel according to its rules, and will resist all ways of feeling, all ways of being, that appear to run counter to these rules, as if it knows, because of these rules, how things are. The mind will speak of love and yet hold the heart prisoner to its new rules, new laws, and still say, this is right and this is wrong. It will speak of love and not see its intolerance or judgment. It will speak of love to be helpful, and with all sincerity, and yet the very logic that it uses, though new, wounds the heart of the most tender, of those most called to love and its sweetness. I am wrong to feel the way I do, the tender-hearted says to herself, and convinced that others know what she does not, covers over her tenderness with protection. You think that in order to share you must be able to speak the same language, and so you regress to the language of mind with its precision. The mind so hates to be confused, to be open, to remain open and not know. It desires anchors to hold it in one spot and hell there suffers the pounding of the sea of change, resists the current, fortifies itself against a storm. The mind will return always to where it feels safe and sure of itself, and so it goes nowhere and sees not transformation or creation or the new horizon that would defy its reality. The mind cannot hold open the doors of the heart, and yet we turn within, turn to the mind, and show it where its openness lies, where sweetness abides, where love's knowing is found. All the mind can do is rearrange reality and hold it still and captive and rule bound. The laws of love are not laws such as these. The laws of love are not rules, facts, or right answers. The laws of love bring spiritual freedom, the freedom that lies beyond belief beyond thought, beyond adherence to any authority other than one's own heart. The heart is needed to guide the mind in a way that it does not desire to be guided, a way that is one of joining, a way that does not allow the mind's separate stance, its rules or its right answers. The heart is needed because it is who and where you are and responds in love to what is one with it. We are one heart, we are one mind. The route to oneness and union, to life and form that accepts oneness and union, to humanity restored to wholeness, is through the heart of the mind. This course will seem remedial to some, easy to some, complex to some. The mind may say, yes, yes, I know. Tell me something I don't know. The mind may reel at contradictions, cling to known truth, compare this wisdom to other wisdom. The mind will attempt to understand with its own logic and fight the logic of the heart. The mind will seek new rules and perhaps be willing to rearrange its reality once again. The mind is its own reality. You cannot escape the mind's reality with the mind. You cannot learn how to escape the reality of the mind with the mind's pattern of learning or of logic. You cannot live in a new and fresh world and retain the mind's reality. There is no everyone to whom I speak, to whom I give these words. There is no single, no solitary, no separate mind to whom these words are spoken. These words are spoken heart to heart, 
from one heart to one heart. Everyone is just a concept. These words are given to each one. They are heard only by each alone, by which I mean in the sanctity of the one heart. We are one heart. We are one mind. Joined in wholeheartedness, we are the heaven of the world. We replace bitterness with sweetness. We dwell in the reality of the one heart, creation's birthplace, birthplace of the new. The new is not that which has always existed. It is not that which can be predicted. It is not that which can be formed and held inviolate. The new is creation's unfolding love. The new is love's expression. The new is the true replacement of the false, illusions, demise, joy birthed among sorrow. The new is yet to be created, one heart to one heart. This is the course for the heart, the birthplace of the new.